Black lights and booze burn when I record for watch and every black like Troy Davis who never had a fair shot. All black everything. Welcome to Left to Black. I'm your host, Mark Anthony Neal. We're joined today by Professor Tariq Pickens, who is Associate Professor of English and African American Studies at Bates College. She's the author of New Body Politics, Narrating Arab and Black Identity in Contemporary United States. And she's also the editor of the special issue, a 50th anniversary issue, of African American Review on Blackness and Disability. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's good to be here. Your special issue on African American Review, um, you know, first of all, it's the 50th anniversary of it. Um, so it's this huge thing. And you were given the opportunity to edit a conversation on blackness and disability. Um, it, you know, before you came to the studio, we talked a little bit about how there has not been much chatter right. about it. And, and in some ways, I think that is reflective of the general ways that we have not really engaged the subject matter of blackness and disability. So talk about a little bit about your thinking and pulling together the yeah. special issue. Yeah, so I came to disability studies as a field rather, I wouldn't say late in my graduate career, but it certainly it took me a while to get yeah. clear about the fact that that was something I was interested in. And so once I realized that black disability studies was just going to look a little bit different yes. than uh, disability studies more broadly, um, I realized that after the first project I wanted to do a little bit more curatorial work. Um, and so I approached uh, Nathan Grant, who's the current editor of African American Review, and I said, I want to do a special issue. Um, the first thing I told him was that I was not on any timeline. Okay. Um, so that helped him figure out a place to put me. Right. Um, and we ended up with the 50th anniversary issue, which was amazing. Um, part of my thinking on it was that the silence around disability belies the actual presence of disability. Right. Um, and things like fat phobia and aging and all of the ways that embodied realities for black folk um, are very much wedded to mm -hmm. an idea of needing to be superlatively able. Right. Um, part of the reason why I think Black Disability Studies is so fascinating for me is because it is quite literally tethered to how we understand race and blackness at all. Um, prior to 1939, blacks were considered feeble-minded, the idea was that we were going to die out, um, and then Jesse Owens shows up in front of Hitler, and then it's, oh, they are superlative. And so it's either the completely disabled body, even though that's the body where right. the entire country is relying on for labor, right. um, and then the superlative body. A hyper, hyper abled body. Exactly. Right. And so both of those are very much wedded um, to blackness. And so I thought that there were ways to talk about it that required we do a little bit more in-depth thinking. One of the, the phrases that you kind of turn on in your introductory essay is that difference between black disability and blackness disabled. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about those distinctions there? So that wasn't a phrase that I had worked on. <laughs> it's not, it wasn't one that I was particularly wedded to. Um, but uh, black disability, to my mind, seems as though it is um, more of an identity category. And blackness disabled allows you to theorize about it without necessarily needing black bodies to do so. That the presence of blackness and disability exists regardless of whether there is a black person there or whether there is a disabled person there. For instance, a lot of the literature in disability studies broadly, particularly by white disabled men, seems to reach for a particular kind of whiteness which is anathema to blackness, which is anathema to disability. So the idea of whiteness as successful relies on racism and ableism. Right. So blackness disabled then begins to constitute whiteness. itself against it's whiteness. whiteness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, in the, in the introductory essay, you talk about Blind Lemon Jefferson. Um, and, yes. and I've always been struck about the amount of scholarship that's been written on black blind musicians, um, even beyond the kind of Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles examples. And that seems to be the only really kind of sustained commentary, scholarly commentary that we ever see on black disability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it speaks to an interest in black music. Right. 
um, and superlative black cultural expression. Um, but it also allows disability sometimes to disappear. Right. So it becomes a safe way to talk about disability. I, I mean, because quite honestly, as I'm reading that essay, I had to pause for a moment because I actually had to, in my mind, process why Blind Lemon Jefferson is a is a focal point for disability, but it's like, oh, it's blind. <laughs> Jefferson, right? It's like, yeah. oh, right. And, and so it speaks to your larger point that it kind of it erodes, right, when we talk about it in terms of, of blindness. Yeah, and I, I'm looking at him through the lens of Ty and the Jess's right, right, um, right. piece and this on conversation Lindo. with, uh, right, uh, yeah. And the idea, what he he says, you can translate your music into, and he's got kind of a, a coterie of uh, examples, but you can translate it to um, a new guitar and all the leg you can stroke or something like that. <laughs> and uh, one of the things I'm finding really, I found really fascinating about that is that Lead Belly sort of disappears. Right. Even though that's the titular character the of the George poetic Right, right. And he's giving him a philosophy for how to live based on all of this sensorium that right. has nothing to do with sight. Right. Um, and it becomes this modality of creating a black uh, male um, disabled philosophy for life. Yeah. And you can't have one without the other. What were some of the artists or writers that you brought into conversation um, as you were pulling together the, the issue? Oh, wow. So in the introduction, I do this, I do a little bit of... Um, I don't know really what to call it, but sort of theorizing from below with the footnotes. I didn't want the introduction to be a rehearsal or lit review. I wanted people to be able to get into a close reading, see how it was done, and then have all of the literature right. on the back end. Right. So to that end, there's all of these footnotes there about where to find all the information on right. disability. Right. And I list all of the usual suspects for black disability studies. So uh, Rosemary Garland Thompson, Christopher M. Bell, um, Ellen Samuels, Michelle Jarman, um, Sammy Schalk, uh -huh. uh, quite a few others. That's a great new book that just came out. She does. Bodies, uh, body Minds Reimagined. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, and then there's, there's all the folks who are contributors to the special issue, whose work... Um, I mean, the, these essays are superlative in quality, and I think that is due very much to the hard work that they put in to make it nuanced and also the conversations they're having among themselves. So Sarah Oram's essay on Grey's Anatomy yeah. is deeply conversant with Timothy Lyle's essay on uh, Pearl Cleave, um, which is provocatively titled, Trying to Scrub That Deaf Pussy Clean Again, um, Pleasure in Pearl Cleave. Um, and the two of them have this conversation about what it means to derive pleasure right. from these texts that, uh, that require black women be excoriated. Right. Um, and then Sarah Oram's uh, text is in conversation with the idea of suffering, yeah. which Mike and Mike Bill Gill and Nirmal Aravellas take up in their discussion of not Henrietta Lacks, but Elsie Lacks. Right. Um, and uh, Sammy Schalk takes up with her discussion of Octavia Butler. Right. And they all problematize this idea of suffering in different ways. Sarah Oram refuses to use it. Sammy Schalk, oh, sorry, Sarah Oram does use it. Uh, Sammy Schalk doesn't use it, um, and there's a, a sense that that word becomes kind of contested right. because it, it creates tragedy um, or speaks to tragedy in some ways that black folk have been resistant yeah. to ascribing tragedy to disability. You mentioned Sammy Schalk, um, mm -hmm. and you were here visiting Duke as part of the Summer Institute for teaching and professional advancement. Yes. Um, I can remember when Sammy Schalk was either first year or brand new professor um, who was a mentee mm -hmm. um, in, in the program a few years ago. You're here as a mentor. Yes. Um, talk about the experience of, of working so far within the Summer Institute and how important mentoring it has been for your career on both sides of that. Yes. So I, th I think in some ways it's really intimately tied to doing the work of a special issue. Yeah. Because the curatorial, editorial work that you do when you were trying to usher an essay to completion, regardless of whether it ends up in the edited collection, is um, an act of mentorship. You right. have to right. you have to really craft your acceptances, your rejections, your critiques, 
your sense of others' critiques right. and your editorial in a way that in a form of critical generosity. Exactly, right. um, and for me, that's been deeply important because I've had some horrible experiences yeah. being on the receiving end, and I've had some really great experiences being on the receiving end. Um, being part of SIPA um, as a mentor is deeply rewarding. One, because you get a chance to see this new crop of uh, faculty of color come in hungry for information on how to succeed um, and coming in with a kind of vulnerability that's difficult because we're so interested in performing strength right right or performing calculated modes of misery right. um, that that is refreshing to see them tell you I need this yeah. or I don't know this um, and as a mentor it's a little it's a little unnerving yeah. to feel sort of responsible for ushering someone, but it's also useful because you understand that the advice you're giving is hard one, um, and certainly going to be useful so someone else doesn't make the same mistakes that you have or avoids mistakes that you've successfully avoided as well. So that's, I mean, that's been my experience so far, and I'm looking forward to the next two years with my mentee to, to see her move to a yeah. different place. What are you working on now? So I just finished uh, my second monograph called Black Madness, Mad Blackness. And there's a double colon in there that actually means something. <laughs> I wanted to avoid the, the sort of uh, traditional academic title. Yeah. Um, and it's on, as one could guess, Blackness and Madness. Um, it's marketed, I think, best toward folks who have a slight handle on, dis on black disability studies. Okay. So basically, if you've read the special issue, right. you should approach right. this book. Um, and I'm using Afro-futurist authors as theorists rather than objects of inquiry. Um, and I'm assuming that creative writers are having more complicated conversations about blackness and right, disability, right. Um, madness in particular, than critics. Because critics seem to be, because we rely on creative authors, so there's a little, always a little bit behind them. Right. And I think Octavia Butler and Nalo um, Hopkinson, uh, Matt Johnson, Victor Laval, that mm -hmm. they're having kinds of conversations that we are trying to catch up, up to. to. Yeah. 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 So that's it's coming out in May 2019. So I'm looking forward to that. I just finished that. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> We've been talking with Professor Terry Pinkett who is a social professor of English and African American studies at Bates College, way, way, way up there <laughs> in the Northeast. In the cold, in the present time. She's the author of <laughs> New Body Politics, Narrating Arab and Black Identity in the Contemporary United States, published by Routledge in 2014, and the editor of a special issue, 50th anniversary issue of African American Review on Blackness and Disability. Thank you so much Thank for having for me. Us. Black lights and booze burn when I record for watch And every black like Troy Davis who never had a fair shot All black everything, everything black Culture over everything, y'all, we taking it back 